Manitoba Pork offers weekly surveillance to, uh, to these facilities for PED. And we found this highly effective in, in understanding the overall disease risk in the province. Uh, high traffic facilities, just due to their nature, they see lots of ins and outs. Mm -hmm. It's not a surprise to anybody. Uh, and if, if we do get a flag positive, we can act on it quickly. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. We pride ourselves on bringing the latest and greatest research to you, the listener, every week. We are going to have a part two episode today where we are joined again by Janelle Hamblin. If you were not able to listen to our part one episode on their regional PED elimination efforts in Manitoba, I'd encourage you to go back one week now and listen to part one first, where Janelle educates us on uh, the, the monitoring that they'll do, the biosecurity to try and prevent PED introduction, but then also the actions they're planning for if and when they do have another regional outbreak this year. Janelle will walk us through how they're going to identify it um, and then uh, what the steps are to try and control those outbreaks. Uh, but in the part two, I wanted to ask Janelle some more questions about, um, you know, how did they get engagement from all the industry level stakeholders? And ultimately, where do the resources come from to execute this program? And I think you'll be very intrigued by some of her answers. So without further ado, let's welcome Janelle back into the podcast and ask Janelle to kind of kick us off by talking about the resource question. We know we need diagnostics done, and uh, we know that uh, the diagnostic resources are going to be extra cost for somebody. How, Janelle, do we think about resources in general for the PED elimination program? Well, a large part of this is, is industry-led, industry-funded in terms of cost for um, elimination and cleaning and disinfection. Like Those are industry-covered costs. In terms of diagnostics for um, confirmation and then moving through the elimination process to uh, what we call presumptive negative status here in Manitoba, a large part of those diagnostics are covered under our uh, Provincial Disease Investigation Program. So our chief veterinary office will work directly with the veterinarian on farm um, and portions of, well, the diagnostics themselves are covered and there's also some compensation in terms of veterinary time and, and oversight needed to move through those elimination steps. So that is provincially funded or portion of it, um, but the, the loss of production piece, as well as the cleaning and disinfection costs, those are industry uh, held expenses that we've, well, the industry has been bearing since 2014. And to be quite honest with you, uh, it's been a big portion of, or a big driver to lead to a the development of a plan in that the financial cost of PED is large. And if we can minimize the amount of cases um, that take hold in Manitoba, that really does, uh, it puts more money in producers' pockets. And coming out of last year, that, that was a rough year. So we need to, we've been looking at how um, these steps will contribute to um, greater greater potential for uh, financial gains for our producers, for sure. And we know that if you don't get PED, there that only helps to uh, helps the, the pocketbook in, in the long run. So a big part of it is focused on on eliminating uh, disease. And obviously, we, we don't want disease to take hold in the province. But a big driver of that is financial, of course, as yeah. well. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more summarize Janelle and tell me if I get any of this wrong, but it seems fairly straightforward that the the affected farms, they have to clean up, right? But they would have to clean up anyway. So disinfectant costs, washing, those sorts of things, they're, they're sunk costs for the producer, unfortunately. Yes. But we don't need to look for new funds there. 
um, the uh, the oversight, I presume, and we'll get into this a little more, but I presume that, you know, if it's uh, uh, producer led and you've got Manitoba pork involved, right? If, if it's a producer led group, you know, some sort of producer funded entity is going to provide the oversight. Again, we have funding already in place for those those programs, right? Um, so the two big areas there, they're kind of already taken care of, and that leaves the diagnostics. So if we're going to do some more active monitoring, that's not something anybody's paying for today. And we need to find a way to fund that, but that's kind of the one open area that we have to solve for, which makes makes the resource piece a little less daunting if it's just diagnostic costs that we have to figure out. Is that is that a fair summary or am I missing something on the cost side that we still need a solution for? No, I, I think like the diagnostics piece and the, the on-farm surveillance is, is really what we're working on right now uh, to to fund and to 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 get rolling. We actually are currently doing uh, active surveillance at our high traffic facilities, so at our at our assembly yards and our abattoirs here in Manitoba. Manitoba Pork offers weekly surveillance to uh, to these facilities for PED. And we found this highly effective in, in understanding the overall disease risk in the province. Uh, the high traffic facilities, just due to their nature, they see lots of ins and outs. Mm. It's not a surprise to anybody. Uh, and if, if we do get a flag positive, we can act on it quickly. Uh, and we've seen success with this program. And, and this is why we've maintained it over the last few years. And the industry took this on to say, yeah, we are interested in, in continuing this because we did have uh, some government funding uh, operating this program for a few years. So you're right. It it is there's a there's a portion of of the of the costs that have, that are continue to be producer um, that are being held by the producer. But um, certainly we we want to to try to provide as much uh, as we can to allow the program to succeed. And the, and the diagnostic piece is, is something that it, it's not, it's not um, inconsequential. It, it, there's, a, there's quite a bit of cost yep. there. And if we can find a way to get that funded outside of the producer, um, there will be benefit for the sector to understand how that works. So yeah, I think that was a good sign. Very good. What about um, communication with all producers? You mentioned this is a producer-led initiative, and I'm sure to get you know the first 70% of the producers on board is no problem. In fact, they probably come to you and say, let's do this. But what about maybe a niche producer, um, someone that doesn't come to all the Manitoba pork meetings, right? Or maybe a very small scale producer, the, the, the Clayton and Janelle pig farm that has five sows, right? Um, how do you connect with those small producers, make them aware of the program and ultimately get their buy-in to participate just like a larger producer? Great question. And, and we have done a lot of work in the small scale space, primarily related to foreign animal disease preparedness, but that doesn't, or it's that same information transfers to production diseases as well. So we have resources uh, both nationally and provincially for small-scale uh, pig producers that we we point to, but we find that it, a conversation one-on-one -on -one is is probably our most effective method. We have um, we have through different arms of of the work that we do at Manitoba Pork, we have people doing extension and outreach to uh, well the large and the small, and doing a, a more one-on-one -on -one or face-to-face -face or small group setting conversation focused on their needs and their production style has been effective. Um, the information that we share is, is meant for their type of production model. Like a small scale production model is different from a commercial production model. We understand that. And we want to, to give them information that's going to be of value to, to them but also a value to the, the larger uh, swine sector, mm -hmm. the provincial, and, and also providing them information on, on who we are, what we do, why we're doing what we're doing, understanding the, the implications of disease, particularly again around foreign animal disease. Um, but those biosecurity principles, they, they cross sure. disease, which um, does allow for, for that education. Um, in terms of contact and outreach, we do have great, um, well, we have great collaboration with both our national 
um, group, so Canadian Port Council and, and um, as well as our chief veterinary mm -hmm. office. So having um, or getting information and sharing information and between the two, the organizations to provide two small scales. So if, if CPC is doing outreach, then here's information. So we're kind of all singing from the same songbook. But um, a big part of it is is that one on one or or one to a few small scale at their preferred location or instead instead of like yeah they're not coming to our meetings so we tend to, sure. to try to go to excellent them. the last question I have Janelle and not that there would be anybody like this but. Maybe there's a chance there's some producer who says yes at the beginning and either they are not able or not willing to comply with some of the actions um, if and when they ever get infected with PED. Um, enforcement, oversight, right? Uh, I presume you have not been deputized and, uh, and allowed to go out to with uh, the, the Royal Canadian Mounties or anything like that to the farms. But <laughs> in all seriousness, how, how are you going to handle that the first time somebody says, I can't comply with the rules that I agreed to before we started this program? Another great question and, and certainly something that we have, we have considered and we have discussed around our working group table. And a big part of this being that it is industry producer led is how can we support those producers? How can we as an industry say there is an instance where exactly what you just described, what can the industry offer to that producer to uh, assist them to meet the recommendations of the plan? And, and a, a lot of conversation has been around, of course, we, we would need to know the why behind why they wouldn't be able to comply. But if there's ways that we can assist in providing labor, uh, providing assistance with the, the parts of the elimination that are more difficult mm -hmm. than others, um, is there an opportunity to share infrastructure or flows in order to, and we've talked about how we can minimize infected premises, like actual numbers, by moving positive pigs mm -hmm. around um, once, once we can. Sure to like alter flows to minimize like if i have a, if i have a, a positive nursery and your cell barn just broke well can we make some kind of arrangement to move just to limit the number of positive premises so a big part of it is what can the industry offer as a whole to support a producer who may not be able to comply if they flat out choose to not apply they don't they don't agree with or or believe in in what we're we're trying to do here. I think that's a greater conversation as to the why we are doing what we're doing. And we've had a lot of of conversations and opportunities to get in front of our producers through our regular producer meetings to explain the why, explain why we're doing what we're doing and how we're going to go about doing it. Um, and if we need to get into more depth in a in a one on one or um, over like large oversight group from manageable pork and the working group perspective to, to understand that resistance, then I think that there is appetite to do that. Um, we are coming into spring of 2024 and we are anticipating to start seeing some PED pop up in Manitoba. Um, as to your point, we, things are quiet right now, um, but we are going to be in a position now to, to test some of the work that we've implemented. The prevention the prevention side of the plan is, is well underway. I have had a number of examples and um, our examples and perspectives given to me from our veterinarians of what they're doing on their farms in order to prevent. Mm -hmm. But when we do see that first case of PED or those first few cases, that's really going to be our opportunity to test the plan that we've put together and face some of these scenarios that you've described. So. Um, I will, I would be more than happy to give you an update, um, say in a few weeks from now or a couple months from now, just to let you know how things are going and, and where, we're, where we're at with the um, adoption or application of, of the plan. Well, offer accepted. We very much look forward to having you back on to share with us everything you're learning, how it's working well, opportunities to improve. Uh, I, your, your message is nothing short of inspirational, Janelle. Um, you know, your willingness to go forward and try to conquer uh, such a, a big challenge, but one that is entirely able to be conquered. 
Um, you know, you, you have the resources, you have the knowledge. It's really just do you have the willpower? And some of that willpower is being willing to say, you know, yeah, there's 5% of the plan that we are going to have to figure out, you know, we're going to have to figure out what do we do with infected pigs and, you know, the square peg for the round hole, how do we handle that situation? But if we always wait for an answer for everything, if we wait for the perfect plan, we will never do anything because the perfect plan does not exist. And even if it's perfect right now, wait 10 minutes, you will have a gap in it. So I, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing that. And most importantly, I appreciate your willingness to pioneer this approach. It is, I mean it when I say it is truly inspirational for the rest of us that you are endeavoring on this very important project. So thank you very much for coming on and sharing that. Well, and thank you. And and I, I want to, again, reinforce that this is not something that we are by any means gatekeeping. We are very open to providing updates and and with the caveat that we, we don't have all the answers and we are going to be figuring things out as we go along. And I think that there's power in that. I think there's power in in understanding what our gaps are and, and continuing to to work together collaboratively as our sector to continue to address them. So I really appreciate the opportunity to to speak to you today. And if there is folks out there that want to know more um, or have further questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about the work that we've done and the approach that we're taking to apply it. Very good. Imagine being able to monitor your animals and farm climate remotely. The Healthy Climate Monitor combines camera and sensor data, and they will give you real-time insight into behavior, temperature, CO2, relative humidity, ammonia, and air pressure, light intensity, and particulate matter. We give you insight, and you get control. Find us at HealthyClimateMonitor.com. Thank you so much for coming on, Janelle. This is the part where normally I thank the audience for attending, um, but I have a, a, a message to the audience today that I really want them to ruminate on this topic. Um, I mean, think about this as a gauntlet that has been laid down. This is a, a, an opportunity, as Janelle described it, to, to try and improve a disease situation that has cost producers a lot of money for far too long. Um, we have resources, we have tools, um, all of us are in the springtime, and uh, many of us will be spending time in tractors maybe listening to this. If you're hearing this message, think about what can you do to help promote similar efforts in your region, right? Who should you be talking to, and, and ultimately, who is going to take a leadership role in trying to execute this? So with that, um, I want to thank Janelle again for coming on the, the show and sharing with us her knowledge. Uh, it's been tremendous to have you, Janelle. For Janelle Hamblin, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. This has been the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. Thank you for joining us and please have a great rest of your day. Hey everybody, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.